the a lot of these players took advantage of the fact in 2016 that they weren't looking at felonies anymore, looking at misdemeanors. You know, like I mentioned uh, before, 100 pounds somebody got caught with and is a misdemeanor, and we were, we were able to get it judicially diverted. You know, so the, the risk is is less now as opposed to then when, when you're looking at a bunch of felonies versus a bunch of misdemeanors. Seven questions of the session, topped it up with Chris Caddy. I'm Mark Wasserman, Pop Brothers at Law, and you are watching Seven Questions in a Session. You are now watching Seven Questions in the Session. We got a whole different type of interview going on. I'm back up in California, man, here with half of the Pop Brothers, man. The better half. <laughs> the better half, man. <laughs> and we finna get into this quick interview, man. For uh, for uh Again, shout out to the sponsors, Billionaire Hemp Wraps. Treat your lungs better. Spray 420, best cardioterizer out here. And ate off the bone, men's and female oils. Come get you some so you can get you some. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. It's good to see you again. Nice good to, to see, see you again, man. Our, our last interview was 2019. <sighs> five years? Almost five years yes. ago, man. And as you can see, you're doing stuff a little different now, man. But I, I appreciate you allowing me to come out here and interview again. Always. Always our pleasure. All right. My my first thing is I kind of want to <clears throat> spit the script a little bit, man, right. so, so people can know it. So I'm going to make sure I got it right. So is why did you pull me over? I'm not discussing my day. If, am I under arrest or am I free to go? If I'm under arrest, I shut the fuck up. That's pretty much it. I think I missed one part. But it's pretty, well, it's am I being detained? Am I being am detained I or am I free to go? Because you can still be detained before you're arrested, right? You could mm -hmm. still be detained and then invoke the fifth and shut the fuck up and then they could let you go. Why, why do people think that if they say the script correctly that it, they still shouldn't be arrested? Well, and that's that's something that we try to get across, that what we teach is is not to make sure you don't get arrested or pulled over or beat or any of those things. What it's there for is so that at the end, if you are arrested, it will protect and preserve all your constitutional rights, remedies and defenses for after in court. Now, the subsequent offshoot we found of using the script is a lot of people just get a warning for the traffic ticket you were pulled over for. Like I, I was kind of explaining to you off camera about my situation. I was in a small town called Cleveland, Wisconsin. <laughs> I shouldn't have been up there. No, way. <laughs> no small town. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't have been up there anyway. But I had a, a situation where I had caught a, a gun case and I had a roach on me, but I spit the script. I didn't say anything that was going to get me in trouble. Yep. And then after me hiring a lawyer, going through everything the proper way, I was able to get my firearm back. I got everything dropped. So I wanted to say thank you no, all for that. that. That's <laughs> how it's now. That's how it works. You know, that's when we say did the script work for you or people ask how it works. That's exactly what it's for. Not not to make sure you don't you know, you don't go in that day, but to make sure that you have all the weapons at your disposal that your attorney can use and did use for you and get the case dismissed. I still had to spend about $3,000 on a lawyer, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely was able to get all the charges dropped. I was able to get my uh, money well spent. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so in, in Wisconsin, probable cause is still, I mean, smell right. is still probable cause to take you out the vehicle. Like how should people back where I'm from go about that if they well, are riding around smoking? You know, we you spray 420, you know, deodorizer, <laughs> keep it smelling fresh. You know, like even here in California where smell alone isn't probable cause, the smell will lead to a DUI investigation or, you know, other, other, uh, things that the cop are going to hassle you over just because they smell it. So if you can keep it from smelling, that's always going to be your best bet, especially in those states 
where it's just straight up probable cause. They smell it and they can search. Do do you see states like it's like we in Wisconsin, we're in the middle of basically three states where it's legal. So Minnesota, Illinois, Michigan is legal. And we like right stuck in between. You know, it's it stinks because you have a lot of people who need it, who need the medication, and they're forced to go over and cross state lines and then, you know, now now you're now you're trafficking yes. according to the law. You know, and when you cross over state lines and stuff like that, we hear a lot of I, a lot of people who who do that. Some doing it for their kids who need cannabis, and it really it makes no sense to have that surrounding, and it's still they, they're still not going to go legal with it. Just it, I don't get yeah. it. Yeah, they they call themselves being relaxed on it, but it, it's still <laughs> you got hassle. They ain't so relaxed. Yeah, yeah. You know? it's, it's still they still a headache. So. Uh, a question I want to ask you since it has been five years, like what's the difference in California marijuana laws now and then since between 24 and 2019? Nothing. I mean, not the, well, there's nothing different in, in the laws because uh, once they changed in uh, 2016 and they took all the felonies that were uh, cannabis related and made them misdemeanors. Right. One of, but one big change that had happened about two years ago here in California is Newsom signed into law uh, what's called judicial diversion, which makes almost every type of misdemeanor. Almost. There's some carved out exceptions, but any misdemeanor eligible for somebody who is suitable for judicial diversion, which is where we make a motion to the court. We supply character letters and stuff like that. And then the court can decide to put the person under court supervision, not probation, court supervision for a period of 12 to 24 months. And if you do everything the judge wants you to do, then the case will be suspended for that time and then ultimately dismissed okay. if you do it, if you complete everything. So we've gotten cases where a guy was pop popped with 100 pounds. That's a misdemeanor. And, you know, we were able to get it judicially diverted and ultimately dismissed. What's the difference between the the court, uh, what you call it? the Judicial diversion? Yeah, the judicial diversion and actually being on probation. So when you're on probation, you've actually, you've cut some kind of deal and now you're on, you're on active probation and that, uh, deal that you made that's going to be on your record if you plea out to a misdemeanor or a felony it's going to be on your record so this judicial diversion for those eligible misdemeanors keeps it completely off your record it's as if the case never happened okay I right. what what advice would you give people who like to travel with their marijuana like if they're leaving cali and going home to wherever they're going on the plane yeah <laughs> don't <laughs> leave it sorry now 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 we get a lot of pushback from people who you're going to somebody's looking at this going, well, I do it all the time. Okay. I find it all the time. I did. My friend did it all the time and getting away with it doesn't make it legal. Mm. You're simply getting away with it. Now, the fact that most people get away with it again, doesn't make it legal, but there are people who get popped uh, here in LA, still in at LAX, you know, whether it's, you know, a couple ounces, 50 pounds, wh whatever it is, there are still people getting getting caught. And while TSA isn't actively looking for it, but if they stumble across it, it's up to that TSA agent. They can ruin your day, your night, call the cops, cops come. And again, same thing. It's up to them what they want to ultimately do. So we have to say, don't do it. Yo, this your Will County Chris, man. This is a quick break from this session brought to you by Holy Trinity Financial. Now, if y'all watch this show enough, y'all know I'm always preaching financial literacy, and it ain't never too late to get your credit together. And now is the time. So Holy Trinity is offering a once-in-a-lifetime chance for people just like you who tired of the scammers, who tired of paying all this money to the credit repair people and not getting no results. They offering a package just for y'all. All, all y'all gotta do is call this number below or hit the website. Tell them Caddy Chris told you to call. You will get fifty percent off your first month of credit repair service on behalf of your wealth. So man, like I said, Holy Trinity Financials. I would never 
post or promote anything on my show that I didn't believe in. This is not just a pay ad. This is a actual customer talking to y'all. I was one of their first clients and they got my credit exactly where it needs to be. So again, call this number below, hit the website, tell Holy Trinity Financial that Caddy Chris told y'all to call and get 50% off y'all first month of credit repair service on your wall. And back to this interview, man. Do you do you think this country is going to become weed legal everywhere? Going to legalize marijuana uh, everywhere? You know what? My brother disagrees with me, but I say no. No? I say no. Here's why. It, it's going to take something very strong to change my opinion because I became an attorney in 1996. It's 27 something years ago or what have you. And I've been using cannabis, you know, for a long time. <laughs> mm -hmm. But in 1996, here in California, it was the first state to go medical and allow medicinal cannabis for, for patients. And everybody said, and all the pundits said, oh, well, in California did it. In five years, it'll be federal. Nope, didn't happen, nope. right? And then what happened next? Uh, I want to say 2012, Colorado, not California. And this is, two th you know, for 15 years later, Colorado goes adult use. And they go legal with adult use. And everybody's, oh, five more years. And we're going to have, we're going to have it. We're going to have federal legalization in five years. Nope. What, to, now 20, 2016 rolls around. California goes adult use. Five more years. It's going to be federal. They all said it. Everybody said. Now that's 2021. And here we are. And, and, and a lot of other states in that time now have come on and except Wisconsin. Yeah. You know, there's, there, there's, you know, there's, there's like three or four states that completely don't allow anything. And you've got states like Texas that started allowing CBD and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So the fact that over half of the states have allowed it in some form or another, and it's still federally illegal, uh, why is it? Somebody tell me, why is it going to suddenly happen? You know, and I, I just don't I don't think it will. I, I know this is kind of random, but is, do you think there's any politicians making their way up that would try to step forward? Yeah, there, there's a few out there. Um, McClintock is a, a guy who's pushed some some cannabis bills. And I mean, he's really the only one that comes to mind. Um, yeah, the, you know, there's nobody that really comes that's at the forefront. You know, that's coming out as a real big advocate for it. You know, they're trying to push the medical first. You know, that's the way in so that those who are against it, it's like, well, it, it's medical, you know, and that's and that's where we, that's where how it started in California. Medical and then eventually adult use. Yo, this your old caddy Chris, man. This is a quick break from this interview to let you all know to please subscribe, like the channel, man. Tell your people to follow. Tell your girl to follow. So you man's to follow, man. Get us some subscribers. Get us some followers. Share an interview. Yeah, right here. You see it. Seven questions in a session. Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. You can follow my personal page at Caddy CEO underscore Chris. Follow the channel. Seven questions in a session. Back to this interview. Do is the the California like tax? Does that apply to the marijuana? Because in Illinois, oh, it's, hor it's horrible for in, businesses in Illinois. Let's say if you buy an eighth and it's 50 bucks after tax is going to be 70. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. It's just like that here. Bro. It's like that here. It's worse. It's, it's worse. OK, because so it's so hard to open a cannabis business here and and stay open because of the over regulations, over taxation. You're dealing with with the the uh, people who are running everything, and they're spending more time bothering the licensed legitimate companies than going after the black market. We have a client who the 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 uh, CDC, the Cannabis Board, sent fifteen people over there to try to find something wrong. 
And, and there was nothing wrong. It's just a, a waste of time, money, manpower. Meanwhile, the black market is flourishing yes. in California uh, because of that. And, you know, and, and you have a lot of, you know, licensed legal entities forced to dabble in the black market, you know, or oh, something fell off the truck, you know, or whatever. However, however you know, it, it's being done. It's being done. And, you know, you have you have pop up distributors, you have pop up, you know, sessions that, that that still goes on and pop up stores, you know, and they go, they get raided and then they move somewhere else, you know. So and, and, to, and to that end, the a lot of these players took advantage of the fact in 2016 that they weren't looking at felonies anymore, looking at misdemeanors. You know, like I mentioned uh, before, 100 pounds somebody got caught with and is a misdemeanor. And we were, we were able to get it judicially diverted. You know, so the, the risk is is less now as opposed to then when when you're looking at a bunch of felonies versus a bunch of misdemeanors. So, so if I'm not mistaken, you guys like firearm laws are very harsh here, right? Yes, so like that's the only thing that would back in Wisconsin they are we can carry our firearms, right. but here you you can't, right? Well, you have to have a concealed carry if you're going to carry it, and if you have a licensed registered firearm, you need and you're gonna you're gonna travel with it or carry it. You have to have it in a case. You have to have the ammo separated from the gun, and you know all that stuff. All, all that stuff applies. But uh, you definitely still don't want to ever tell a cop, "Well, I have a licensed firearm in my car." You know, you never, you never want to do that because that's just going to you're going to get ripped out, and they're going to start looking everywhere for everything. You know, but you got to be safe and adhere to those gun laws, whatever state you're in. All right, kind of a question outside of the law. I want to ask you. Best weed you ever smoke? Where it West from? Coast Cure. <laughs> I, West Coast Cure. I've been trying to get a hold of some of that forever. That's what this is. Yeah. Their new uh, little vaporizer. But it's got to be West Coast Cure. Of course, some of you out there might know that Jay Cures, the founder of West Coast Cure, is my nephew. Uh, so, that, oh, although I have a new one. If you see this, man, I love to interview you, Jay. Uh, I've been trying for a couple of years. <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll 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 talk to my nephew. Although you know, if people ask my brother and me, you know, how, how do you get touch him with you? You think he's calling his uncle and his father? No, nah, he out there. You know, we're life. still we're still the uncle and the father. Now, if he needs something, we're there. But these recently came out. Mm. The shut the fuck up pre roll that uh, we rolled out. A few months ago, testing them. It's got the script right on the tube, and it's nice one gram OG indica that if you smoke it, you will shut the fuck up. <laughs> All right, man. How how should tours move around Cali when they're out here enjoying the marijuana? Tours? I mean, you know, well, first of all, you got to understand it's not legal to smoke it in public. You can go buy it somewhere legally, but you can't go smoke it out on the streets, which is ridiculous. Unless you have a physician's recommendation, which you get from a, a physician. There, you know, you just just Google California physician physician recommendation, and if you have that, then there's only five places where you cannot smoke in a no smoking zone, within a thousand feet from a school or youth facility on a school bus, while oper operating a boat in a motor vehicle that's operating. So you could be a passenger in a boat that's motoring around in smoke, but not operating it. So so let's say if I'm driving with a friend, he's driving, I'm in a passenger seat, it's okay for me to smoke, but no, not him. No. Me not at all? No, you cannot smoke in a motor vehicle that's operating. Even as a passenger? Correct. Okay. It has to be stopped and you know you can do that all you want um but you better not be within a thousand feet from a school or youth, uh, youth facility you know and i'll say this there are some cities in california that are no smoking zones like you can't smoke a vape a cigarette a cigar the whole city uh like laguna i think is like that and manhattan beach i think but you know if you're if you're a tourist 
and you have purchased them and you're going to, you know, step outside your hotel and, and light up, you should Google the ordinances in the city that you're in and make sure that you, it's not a no smoking zone I'm, uh, I'm, whole city. I'm guilty of that. I smoked outside my hotel room yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, it was early but in where? the morning, though. It was um, by the airport. Oh, LAX? Yeah. yeah. You're, you're, you're likely not going to get bothered. You know? But then there are some uh, uh, lounges that are popping up uh, where people can go smoke. All right. Last question is for for people who do come here, what's one place, what's one beautiful site they should see before they leave Cali? Well, in this area where we're at right now, or just like in California general, in just, general? Mo- most people usually be in the airport area or right. the, the Los Angeles city. So, I mean, wow, that's a good question. In in Los Angeles, well, ho- well, you know what? Actually, since we're talking about <laughs> name a few, no, well, since we're talking about you know smoking and where you can and can't, there's a great spot called the Woods in uh, West Hollywood, the Woods, which is a dispensary. And I think it was one of the first cannabis lounges, and it's owned by Woody Harrelson and Bill Maher. And it's just a, it's a, it's a very cool place to to sit and and vibe and smoke, you know. So if you wanna if you want to l- smoke somewhere where you don't have to be worrying about it, and even though you're gonna see people smoking all over the place, it's just like flying with it. Doesn't make it legal just because people are getting away with it, and you could be the one person that the cops are gonna mess with, you know. So that's a good place um, if you're looking for. Food, nice dinner, real nice dinner. There's a boa off of Sunset Boulevard. And a real cool place to hang out is the rooftop of the W Hotel in Hollywood. Those are my suggestions. All right, man. Well, thank you for letting me come do this interview. I appreciate it. Um, again, uh, follow our sponsors, Billionaire Hemp Wraps, Treat Your Lungs Better. Spray 420, best cardio to rise around here. And eight off the bone, men's and female oils. Come get you some so you can get you some. Oh, and this is the last part of the interview. Yep. Um, camera on you. If you tell everybody your social media, where they can find you at, stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, our website's just popbrothersatlaw.com. If you want to get uh, some of our STFU merch, hats, shirts, stickers, things like that. Uh, P ball merch, P B A L merch.com. And then we're on Instagram, pot brothers at law, pot underscore brothers underscore at underscore law, and all other social media platforms TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, Snapchat, pot brothers at law. I follow you on everything. We're out there. <laughs> <laughs> and again, man, remember the script. I don't know if it's blurry or not. Let me try to. Yeah, there you go. The script stickers are available. Yes, you put this right on your windshield. Yeah. That always works. Hey, the last time you were here, did I do that poem for you? Uh, I don't know. We did the script outside the parking lot after we smoked the joint. Uh, You told me about the nug necklace. That's right. (laughs) So I have this slam poem. Go ahead. Talk to you. I've uh, (laughs) I've done and performed. It's been a while, but it just... You know, I like to I like to reach the younger audience uh, if I can, and it's called "Am I Being Detained or Am I Free to Go?" Okay, but I have to put the mask on, ready to go. Yeah. Am I being detained or am I free to go? This is what to say. My lawyer tells me so. The cops are out there doing a job. Sometimes they must contain a mob, a thankless job that saves many lives. At their home are worried children, husbands, and wives. But does that give them the right to stomp on my rights? So we are here for you, the cannabis community, to fight, to let you know it's okay to just shut the fuck up when cops ask questions. You start with, I'm not discussing my day, end with, I invoke the fifth. These ain't suggestions. These are words to live by, to memorize. See, it's not about the size of that cop's gun because they want you to run so they can pull that macho gun and shoot you for fleeing the scene. Some cops are just plain mean. We must shut it off, shut it down. Those feelings of anger that 
instantly come around when that cop has to show his power and his might without cause, without reason, and we know they're not right. We must remain calm. Keep the devil sleeping on the left shoulder. We must be cold, even colder. Ice must flow through your veins to shut that heat. The blood that rushed your brain straight from your feet when that cop disrespected you because you wouldn't tell him what that smell was. And he accuses you of a pot DUI because he absolutely knows that you're buzzed. But see, they can't tell and they don't know. Only if you tell them so. Oh, officer, I smoked a joint a few hours ago. Officer, here's my medical record. Officer, I'm a marijuana patient. We live in America. Prohibition still exists. That cop's going to do whatever he's going to do. 50-50, he arrests you. Give us a chance to represent you with a defense that's blazing. Let us show you in court we're amazing. But we could only do that if you listen to our tips. Now let me see you move your lips. You know the drill. When the cops ask questions, we say, I'm not discussing my day. Am I being detained or am I free to go? I invoke the fifth and then you shut the fuck up up. It's all about what you say and what you do. We have given you the script. We are telling you what to say. We're telling you what to do. We've put your hands up in protection mode, but should you take a shot to the jaw, we will be here fighting for the cannabis community and all citizens because we are the Pop Brothers at Law. <laughs> oh, I like that. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right, man. See y'all next time.